these black holes are merging a billion years in the past. And we're able to catch these signals now, today, here on Earth. And that's really incredible. Most incredible achievement of all was that you know, human beings were able to build an instrument that was so sensitive. It was more sensitive than any other instrument ever built in history. It is truly just the beginning of an entirely new astronomy. Gravitational waves are tiny fluctuations in the curvature of space and that's something that people often don't think about when they think of gravity and it can travel, travel through the universe. And so gravitational waves uh, really are a distortion eh, in this fabric of space and time. Eh? It was not obvious at all that gravity waves would even exist. Uh, Einstein had predicted them, but he thought it was a mistake. It was part of his general theory of relativity, which I think is fair to characterise as the one nobody understands. Um, the prediction was made that if it was the case that these things really existed, then um, if you built a machine which could detect these impossibly small movements, I mean much, much smaller than the size of an atom, and we just waited, then eventually it would come. In the US, the LIGO project relies on being able to sense the tiny motions of mirrors caused by passing gravitational waves. The um, novel technology involved there that was developed in the UK that is one of the things that has been critical to making that first detection. And it's been a truly international collaboration. The group here in Glasgow is, is one of those groups, again since the, I guess, the 1960s has been working in the field. Along with Glasgow, again historically, there's a group in Cardiff, in the University of Birmingham and at Strathclyde, who have uh, uh, driven forward advances in thinking about the theory of these waves and techniques to detect them. The major contributions of Glasgow to the LIGO detectors was the, um, the, the design and the provision of fused silica suspensions. Fused silica is a very special material. There's a huge amount of detailed engineering and detailed structure to be built. And Rutherford Atherton Lab did a fabulous job at doing that engineering. To give you an idea for how sensitive the instrument is, it can measure movements of about, a, of in fact, better than a millionth of a millionth of a millionth of a meter. And so if uh, at some point you show up and say, you know, you know what I want to do? I want to measure over four kilometers changes in this distance uh, by one thousandth of uh, the size of a proton, people will tell you you're mad. And the problem is that our data is full of all kinds of junk. So if the wind's blowing too fast, if there's an earthquake anywhere in the world, and we have to try and find the signal we're looking for buried among the noise and all these other fake things. So we have models for what the gravitational wave signal from a pair of black holes should look like. Uh, people like Mark Hanum here at Cardiff produce those with big supercomputer simulations. And then you look for that same pattern in the data. I knew that we would detect gravitational waves in the next few years and, and the rest of the collaboration knew we were all very confident. Uh, it was just a matter of when. We were pretty surprised to see something that looked like a signal had appeared quite quickly in both instruments and to be honest it was really hard to take it in. So this event was too good to be true. It was really loud, it happened basically on the, the second we turned the detectors on um, and it was perfect. I have worked on modelling binary black hole signals for the last 10 years and I know exactly what they look like. I look at them every day on a computer screen. But seeing the data from the detector that looked like one of those signals was, was really an incredible moment. Uh, my first thought when I saw it was, that's not a very accurate simulation, it looks a bit noisy. And then I realized, no, that's not a simulation. That's not the results of computer code. That's, that's a signal from nature that was produced a billion years ago and has just been found by human beings. And that's really when it hit me that, oh my God, we've done it. This is. This is it, 100 years, almost exactly 100 years since Einstein published his, his prediction. We found it and we're going to show the world.
I started off wanting to be a physicist about nine or ten years old because of the big questions, being fascinated by the, the universe and, and where did it come from, where did we come from. So to go from that, see things taken right the way through from the design of detectors to their construction, creation, and actually make the first detection is, is quite an extraordinary journey. Everybody uses this word, uh, uh, groundbreaking. Maybe we are abusing these words. Uh, at the same time, I really think this opens up a completely new chapter in science. Eh? For the very first time, we are now able to tune in to this whole new set of information that's coming, and I think that is revolutionary. I think we'll see many more interesting things, but I think it will be very hard to beat the initial discovery, quite honestly. Mm -hmm.